next item is the uh, page 21 is the unauthorised vegetation damage signage policy review. There's a recommendation on page 23. Would anyone like to move or second that motion? I'll move it. Councillor Cordover. And seconded by Councillor Mitchley. Councillor Cordover. Thank you, Mayor. Just finding our page here. So what we're looking at today is the, um, the unauthorised vegetation damage signage policy. And this was initially developed in 2010 in response to several instances of extensive vandalism of large trees on coastal reserves managed by council. Uh, the changes that we're looking at here today are, um, are, are not significant, uh, but they do bring the, uh, bring the policy in line with, um, with uh, what I believe to be best practice and also um, to, to make sure that we're still able to provide um, disincentives to individuals who seek to um, to commit uh, vandalism, essentially, uh, of, of trees. So what we're looking at here is um, the, the most common reason for tree felling or poisoning on public land is to facilitate a sea view from a residence. And the difficulty here is in achieving proof of evidence that's required to prosecute an offender for the act under the Parks and Recreation and Natural Area bylaws. So within the policy, it makes provision for um, putting up signs uh, that say this vegetation has been illegally damaged, and that provides a disincentive to the community. I think there's a, a larger conversation to be had here around how we strengthen uh, these kinds of policies, and an important discussion about whether behaviour change comes through understanding of why it is that people shouldn't damage trees, uh, because of things like the erosion of the coastline, um, threatened species, uh, neighbourhood amenity. Uh, or, and, and I guess there's an ongoing debate around this uh, notion of almost collective punishment, where when a tree gets removed and a sign gets put up, a large sign, um, does that unfairly uh, punish the, the, the entire community? So I would personally like to see that the behaviour is changed to make sure that incidents like what took place in Snug, uh, at the Snug Ex Esplanade, um, and on the Snug Foreshore and in Pearsall Street, never happen again. These are instances where uh, trees have been poisoned and uh, the police were able to get involved and, um, and door knock the neighbourhood and things like that, which um, provides a significant disincentive for, for people to, um, to participate in this awful behaviour. Um, I think it's important that we have strong education campaigns and that we engage the community in a positive way to make sure that they know that this kind of behaviour will not be tolerated and that we have mechanisms in place to, it, to enforce that. So the objective of this policy is to provide a very clear message to perpetrators who illegally clear vegetation on public land that the activity will not be condoned. And I personally would like to see a stronger relationship with police enforcement and also with um, with writing to local community members when trees are damaged, poisoned or pruned to let them know that this is a matter with which the police could get involved and it's also a matter that the council takes very seriously and will enforce uh, at, every, at every possible occasion. So there is an expectation within the community for council to investigate and deter the damage of vegetation on public land and failure to respond in this instance may signal to landowners that the behaviour is condoned and that's the very last thing that we want. So I commend this policy to, uh, to my fellow councillors, but I also would like to initiate a broader conversation about how we, uh, how we strengthen this message that this kind of behaviour is not condoned in Kingborough and that there can be serious consequences uh, for taking these kinds of illegal actions. Thank you, Mayor. Councillor Grace. So in that case, I'll ask uh, Councillor Cordover to... Uh, sum up. Thank you, Mayor. We've had a, um, a fairly uh, constrained debate, I think, uh, but ultimately this policy is to reduce and deter the illegal removal and or damage of vegetation from public land within Kingborough, and it provides a consistent framework uh, with which to, res to allow uh, Council to respond, and it provides an avenue to respond to, to those breaches when they occur. This is something that we, as councillors, need to remain vigilant to, not just because of the environmental damage that takes place, not just to the, uh, the biodiversity risk that takes place, but also to people's neighbourhood amenity. 
and the fact that we need to engender within this community a community spirit that we're all in this together and that it's not appropriate to damage uh, other people's property and it's not appropriate to behave illegally. And uh, we're trying to make Kingborough a great place to live. And when incidences like these take place, it reduces all of our amenity as well as um, providing very serious damage to the local environment. So I commend the policy and I would like to um, particularly thank the staff involved for um, bringing this to us tonight. Thank you. Okay, thank you. The, so the motion moved by Councillor Cordover and seconded by Councillor Mitchley is that the unauthorised vegetation damage signage policy 5.7 as attached to this report be adopted for a further two years. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. And those against, motion is carried unanimously. The next item is the financial report to June 2020. There's